Welcome to the Vigorous q and I'm Coach Steve, here to answer all your bodybuilding related questions. But before we get into the Vigorous q and let's just give you guys a little update about myself. Still on a cruise, but I extended that with 200 milligrams of Primo per week. So before I was on 250 tests per week, 25 milligrams of DHEA, 10 milligrams of pregnenolone, two units of growth hormone, and a little bit of Lantus yeah, to shuttle all the nutrients into the muscle per day. And I added 200 milligrams of Primo per week on top of that. So it's no longer uh, really a cruise. It's basically a, a baby cycle, um, which is enough for me to um, get back into the gym and work my way up to the previous working weights that I was doing before. So, you know, I've been to the gym a couple times. It opened about two weeks ago. So I did a uh, one leg workout, two arm workouts, uh, two chest workouts, and I think one shoulder workout and the other body parts are still trained at home because it's, it's still quite hot in Thailand. Um, you know, and I'm used to the air conditioning right now. So legs, I feel short about a plate on most exercises, maybe half a plate, uh, chest same, one plate, half a plate short to my uh, previous working weight for about six to six to seven reps. So I'm, I didn't really lose any real strength, but I'm getting back up there. You know, it's not like I have to do working weights while I was in lockdown. So I was able to maintain most of the strength, um, you know, last two, two and a half months that we were in lockdown. And now jumping on this baby cycle with a little bit of Primo, I'm going to slowly increase my working weights back up to the previous maxes and then hopefully increase from there, you know, calories first and then Primo, additional Primo second. Yeah. That's a little update for myself. Um, I was able to somehow increase my working weights for triceps. Um, I guess the time off really did me well. You know, usually triceps get hit with shoulders and then chest workouts. And then of course, on top of that, you do arms and then you get, you know, you hit triceps three times a week. So normally I would do like a push workout, but I've been doing like five days, six days split most of the time, um, you know, for recovery purposes. So since I was training at home, you know, you do like a, a decent chest and a decent shoulder workout, but not as intense as I would like to do, um, especially compared to a real gym, you know, like the muscle factory. So at the home gym, I was doing, uh, you know, an arm day, chest day, shoulder day, um, but I didn't stimulate it that much compared to what I would do in the gym. So now that I'm back in the gym, I'm doing um, you know, 55, 45, uh, you know, 54 kilo overhead dumbbell extensions, which I've never done before. So the first workout was um, 40 kilos, second workout 50, and then I was able to do 55 last Monday, which is great, um, relatively easily. So, you know, the next step will be 60 kilos, but I'm not sure if I can get that dumbbell into position because it's, you know, the 55 kilos when, you know, you put it on your on your uh, chest, shoulder, or tie in, and then you go over your head. And the 55 kilo was already hitting me in the forehead, trying to move it in. So the 60 kilos, probably another inch thicker. So let's see if I can even get that into position. And otherwise I'm gonna have to find a guy that um, is strong enough to do 60 kilo goblet squats, because that's you know basically how he's gonna have to lift it. See if I can uh, get it done. You know, the, the, the joys of uh, um, maxing out on certain exercises. And, uh, you know, like a skull crusher, I'm pretty much the same, 20 kilos per side on the easy bar. Um, where else were I at? I think the tricep push down is still about 50, 60 kilos. Um, yeah, with the cables. Yeah, so the only thing I was able to progress was triceps. Everything else stayed pretty much the same. I hope everybody, um, you know, when they, when they went back to the gym, uh, they were equally strong or close to it. I noticed there were a lot of signups the last month. <laughs> So, you know, as gyms were opening up worldwide or people were preparing to go to the gym again, they started contacting me. You know, a lot of a lot of the potential clients were in contact with me throughout the lockdown and say, you know, Steve, I like your work. I like what you think about uh, and your nutrition and your training and, you know, the PD info, info that you provide. So I ended up with 57 clients, uh, which means I'm at maximum capacity right now. Um, you can find the new rates in the description field for those of you that are still interested in joining. I feel that I got given everybody ample time to sign up on the old rates, um, you know, while the gyms were opening worldwide. So if you want to join in, the new rates are down below. Consultations are always available. Uh, for coaching, I only accept full-time bodybuilders from now on. I don't have, I'm sorry, I don't have any space for, uh, you know, recreational bodybuilders or weight loss clients. It, I'm just too full. Um, so if you can cook all your own meals, um, 
you go to the gym, whether it's a home gym or a real uh, gym, you know, a hardcore gym or a fitness center, you can do your blood work. You're willing to invest a little bit in health supplements and um, PEDs are uh, the lowest priority on your list. Yeah, The cooking is more important to you and the training and the health supplementation and the blood work is more important to you than the PEDs. You can contact me with the rates below. And if you only care about PEDs, that's fine. <laughs> I'm probably not the right coach for you. You can still use a you know one hour consultation or uh, or the Facebook group where uh, most of the information can be found. Give that a thought. I hope to hear from you soon. So it's been it's been pretty crazy with new signups just last month. I've uh, I think I pumped out twenty two programs <laughs> for clients um, the last couple of weeks. Uh, so not much sleep for me, unfortunately. But I'm happy that everybody's going back to the gym and uh, was uh, incentivized to get started the best way they see how with, uh, you know, coaching from yours truly. So all those clients are on their way, uh, getting shredded, getting swole uh, and getting huge. And that's great to see. It's very motivating for myself. So I'm going to apply my baby cycle to the gym, grow the best way I can, get my quads back up to respectable size and then hopefully make them a strong body parts which has been taking years but they're getting better and better and better you know when the quads matches the back then we're on the right track and with that out of the way let's just get into the first question which is from don martelli if you've achieved a really good physique how many milligrams of tests are really needed i've seen bodybuilders with 260 pounds uh, so it's about 120 kilos and can maintain at 100 75 milligrams testosterone per week with four, three or four workouts. Can you explain at every weight from let's say 190 to 150 pounds, which doses just seem to be best? And if the GH is really needed when maintaining or test can be do the trick. Thanks mate. All right, so there's no need to go, uh, you know, in 10 pound increments because what I've used as a general guideline for myself and most of my clients, if you want to maintain size, one milligram of testosterone per pound of body weight. Yeah. So if you're 230 pounds, 230 milligrams of test. If you're 190 pounds, 190 milligrams of test per week. So I was able to maintain uh, my size and improve my triceps on 250 milligrams of test for 230 pounds of body weight. So that's a little bit more generous. That's 20 milligrams more generous than I should be taking. Plus, I was taking GH, DHEA, DHEA, pregnenolone, and insulin on top. Yep, so it's more than enough to maintain the size. Now I've gone down to about 200 tests, two units of growth hormone, and I was able to maintain my size as well. So that's no DHEA, no pregnenolone, no insulin to um, maintain the size. But cosmetically, it doesn't look the same. Um, and I, I definitely didn't progress, even though my calories were pretty high. I uh, just got, you know, maintained the same strength and uh, slowly got fatter. Um, so I, uh, I, I keep my cruise dose a little bit more generous. You know, it's not hormone replacement because hormone replacement, of course, would be, you know, keeping your testosterone levels in the reference range. So you're like between 600, 700, 800, 900, maybe even a thousand nanograms per deciliter. That's hormone replacement. But a cruise, in order to maintain the size that you've built as a bodybuilder needs to be a little bit higher um, because you've got, you know, unnatural amounts of muscle mass. And for that, you need an unnatural amount of testosterone to maintain it. And you don't need to go to one gram, two grams uh, to maintain it. That's definitely not necessary. All you need to be is in a calorie surplus that need, can be, you know, 5% more of over maintenance, 10% more. So if your maintenance is 3000, you can increase that to 3300 calories. Easy job done, 200 tests, 250 milligrams of test, you know, one milligram of testosterone per week per one pound of body weight. You can maintain easily on that. You can actually reduce the testosterone dose a little bit if you're adding growth hormone or insulin because that optimizes the whole process of uh, recovery and, and, you know, your ability to maintain the size that you've built. Um, and if you want to improve a little bit, you might want to increase, you know, the same method you do with your calories, you add 10% on top, you might be able to, you know, improve and, you know, progress your physique with 10% on top of your maintenance dose of testosterone. Yeah. So if you're 230 pounds like me, 
and you should be taking 230 milligrams of testosterone per week at 10%, 23 milligrams or 20 milligrams, yeah. Creep it up to 250 milligrams per week, that's what I did, and you're able to progress, you know, or at least maintain the strength. And then you don't have to increase the calories that much, but of course, if you increase the calories with 10% on top of that, you should be able to make good progress. Yeah? And of course, as you get bigger and bigger and bigger, you you know, the nuance of the bodybuilding is going to be more pronounced because you will get further and further and further away from your natural potential, basically. So when you're close to your natural potential, you might be able to maintain that by going off cycle. So let's say you um, you worked your way up to your uh, limit, 190 pounds without drugs. That was your max. Now you go on cycle one, one or two cycles, you do 210. You go off cycle, you might be able to maintain 210 naturally, but it's just not going to look as cosmetically similar as when you were on cycle or even when you were natural, because now you have less hormones for that increased amount of money, uh, body weight. So, you know, you're going to have to play with the dosages a little bit, you know, not, not too high, obviously, but you can safely reduce it to the point where you notice that your either strength is going down or your cosmetic appearance is not as, um, I don't know, how do you say it? Impressive, um, admirable, um, pleasing to the to the eye. And you go by that. And, and, you know, the whole point of a cruise is getting all your blood work markers in range. So if your cycle was not astronomical and you go down to a cruise, you know, your blood work should look reasonably good within a, a week or four, you know, a week, four weeks, you know, one month. And then you maintain your blood work two or three months, you know, to make sure that everything is okay. You can go back on cycle. But if you would just want to stay on that, um, on that cruise dose, which is maybe 10% more than one milligram per one pound of body weight, you should be able to maintain um, your size and your strength as long as the calories are a little bit more than you require. You might be able to improve, you know, depending on your level of uh, development. And I hope that answers your question. If anybody else has a question, vigorous q and at the end of the month. If you have a pressing question, look into the PPQ service. Details in the description field down below. And if you have a lot of questions, well, I think you're better off in the Facebook group. Hope to see you guys there. I'll see you in the next video.